is Astoria C and my name is Toyo A. Phillips. Welcome to Astoria C's. My name is Toyo C. Phillips. Astoriosis is a talk show that addresses a variety of social issues, so from the serious to the amusing, the sad and even the controversial, my guests and I will be speaking on these issues and sharing candid experiences that have shaped how we see things. So, my guest today is one whose recognition in the fashion and style world is growing in leaps and bounds. I'm talking about none other than Mimi Onolaja. Welcome to the show, Mimi. <laughs> Thank you, oh, you look so good as always. Well. Thank you. Uh, how are you? Second chick, mm -hmm. second chick. Mm -hmm. I've forgotten how we fashion it. Oh, yes. <laughs> Actually, three. I mean, you people. <laughs> background on Mimi. She's a presenter and the host of VVIP events on Ebony Live TV and she's a star girl people, like seriously. <laughs> she's a star girl. She was recently on the cover of Wedding Planner magazine and has done campaigns for brands from Black Opal to exclamations like she's really taking over the fashion and um, style scene which is why she's here today because we're talking about fashion's contribution to this society please my first question is who fashion F? <laughs> <laughs> okay okay no seriously okay but before we get to that listen I'm all about my free Ankara dress mm -hmm. and flip-flops I'm very easy laid back in my own choice of clothing and of style, I would say, but how did you become so fashion conscious and fashion forward? Um, first off, your Ankara and your flip-flops, that is fashion, oh. just so you know. <laughs> just so you know. Um, I don't know. I feel like I've always been, I think it started from wanting to look good. I've always cared about my parents. That's, that's the honest truth. I've always wanted to put my best foot forward when it came to what I wore. And somehow I just, I realized that I, I, I kind of knew how to play with clothes okay. and stuff. I kind of knew how to put them together and make them make sense to me. Um, and it just, it just, it just, it just started from there. <laughs> I don't know. I just, I, the underlying thing is me just wanting to look good. I always want to, how I look is very important for my self-confidence on any given day. So right. I always, I always want to look good. When I look good, I'm more confident. Like you like step out and I I'm ready step to out and I'm ready to strut. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, okay. that's, that's how it's, yeah. So, and then how did you get, come on the like, focus, come to the focus of everyone? What do you mean you don't know? I don't know. Because now like you're at events, you're at, I guess because of VVIP events, That's you have the to thing. be at the most exclusive of events Exactly. In Lagos. And so your style and all of that. Mm, I mean, so I have to go to these events. I yeah. have to dress up to these events. Most of the time there's dress codes. Okay. I have to adhere to dress codes. And I mean, because I know that I'm presenting VVIP events, it's going to be on TV. Photographs are going to be taken. Mm. Again. Almighty <laughs> red carpet. Almighty red carpet. So I mean, I want to look good, you know, and I want to make sure that when the uh, shots are taken from all angles, they work. It hasn't always worked. I'm not going to lie. I see some pictures and I cringe. Mm. But I mean, that's, it's, Going to all these events, having to dress up, having to get my makeup done, having to make sure that the entire look ties together. I guess somehow people have taken notice. I don't. I didn't. Somehow <laughs> people no, have taken notice because I didn't take any any actual steps towards making sure that right. I, you know, so any no reality TV show, no, none of that. <laughs> no, no shade, no shade, no, none right. of that, none of that. So I feel like it's kind of happened organically, right? You know, which is. Okay, so question for you. Is there a difference between fashion and style? Um, I think there is. I think, yeah, I think there is. I feel like fashion is more textbook. So fashion is the textures, the fabrics, you know, that's um, the silhouettes, so the A-line skirts, the wide leg pants, the flared sleeves, <laughs> and all of that. But style is what you do with all of that. So fashion is a lot, you know, it's all the technicalities. And I feel like fashion is kind of what you would learn in school. Right. But style is what you now do with all of that information, all of that knowledge, how you put all of that together and come up with an outfit. So style right. is more who you are. So the Nigerian fashion industry, hmm, I feel like it has grown, mm -hmm. but 
I mean, what's your take on the industry, the growth of the industry? Um, I echo you there. I think it has grown tremendously, and even more so in the last five to six years. Because um, I feel like the last five to six years saw the emergence of the Lagos Fashion and Design Week, for right. instance. You know? Now we have the GT Bank Fashion Weekend as well. Those are huge, 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 huge platforms. Now we have designers that are making collections to correlate with the global fashion calendar. So we have our designers doing their spring summer collections, autumn winter collections. They are showing these collections on the runway. It looks, the production is amazing on point. It all looks beautiful. So I think, I think it has really grown. Personally for me, so when I would go on vacation for instance, a huge part of my money and a huge part of my time, time. go on shopping, you know, it was, I go on vacation once a year, you know, and I make sure that I shop enough to carry me through for the entire year. But honestly, the last two to three years, I've barely bought any clothing. I've only bought the basics, so I've bought shoes, denim, you know, the basic white shirt here and there. But when it comes to actual clothes, I'm so confident I can dress myself the entire year from stuff that I buy here in Nigeria. So the industry has grown. Interesting. It has grown. Interesting. Definitely. So maybe maybe I'm not I don't know, maybe I'm looking at the wrong places, but why are these pieces so expensive? Hmm. Now that is the problem that I personally have with the fashion industry. Because I see a top and then they say something, something thousand naira mm. and then I convert it and it's like maybe over a hundred pounds. Why? That's the problem I have with the industry. I feel like there's, yes, we have a lot of designers. There's a lot of emerging ones every day. But if it feels like or it seems like they are trying to cater to the same set of people. You know, like so the upper, the upper class. Upper mobile people that can afford these mm. luxury items. Right. You know, because they're, they're priced in the luxury market space. But they forget the fact that Nigeria is a population of 170 170, yeah. And a huge chunk of that population cannot afford Forge. these things. So that, I think that would be one problem and one solution that, one problem that I would like to see a solution to really soon. We need more affordable fashion. And when I say affordable, I don't mean, I say a lot of brands say that they are affordable. I open, <laughs> I, I check the price tag and I see 12,000, 15,000. Affordable for who? Yeah. I know that yeah. affordability is relative, yeah. you know, but let's be realistic. In the economy that we're in right now, and with the population that we have and with the buying power of these people, when you say affordable, I want to look at your price tag. I want to see 4,500 now, 5K. Some brands are doing it. Yeah. You know, yeah. there's my T5S of the 5K shop. There's this that I'm wearing for. For instance, it's, I mean, it's a young lady. She's really upcoming, but it's beautiful. Yeah, it is. And I it's, not, it's not cutthroat, you know? Right. Okay, we have to go on a short break now, but when I come back, we'll be talking about size in the fashion circle, because I see you throwing at a lot of run throwing. throwing. <laughs> <laughs> at a lot of runway shows and all of that, but a lot of the pieces on the, we have to go on a short break. We'll be right back <laughs> after this break. Coming up on Astoria Seas. If you're looking good, you'll be, you get up and do it. That's Misha. Like, if I'm looking good, chances are I will get up. My style gives me confidence I don't have. Take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Astoria Seas. I'm here with style icon in what? the making. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mimi on knowledge. And we're talking about fashion's contribution to the society. So I was asking before the break that I see you sitting like front row, all this Lagos Fashion and Design Week and all these places. And how do you deal with the sizes of the runway or on the runway? Because when you like a piece, you're not the typical model size. Do they now make exclusive stuff for you? Or how, how does that work? That is a problem for me. I can't, I can't even lie. Like, I see stuff on the runway and I already picture myself in them. And you know the way, the way it is for us media personalities and people and actors and all of that. So we approach designers and say, oh, I like this piece, I'd like to wear it. And they say, oh, I'm sorry. We don't <laughs> style <laughs> in this We don't style people in, um, we only style people in the pieces of the runway. And these pieces are sample size. And sample size is like a four or a six, you yeah. know. So I'm just I'm like, eh. Okay. Is that something that should be addressed? Uh, or is that 
I mean, because they want to be international, and yeah. I, I get that. I but get the thing that. is, I feel like even internationally, the the focus is kind of shifting. So we see more plus size models on the runway. Michael Kors did a collection recently and had plus size models on the runway. Right. And I see people like Ashley Graham yeah. strutting her stuff, and it just gives me it gives me hope. <laughs> <laughs> it gives me hope that they are going to, you know, think more about, you know, we the fuller size ladies and yeah. try and cater to, cater to us. Well, I, 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 I don't think I've ever heard of any Nigerian designer that would show something on the runway and then you approach to get something made in your size and they'll say no we don't get touched no it's, right. it's never that bad okay okay because the i don't i don't want to say i don't know how this sounds but the typical african is curvy like the typical african is not, not skinny. skinny it's not really a build it's yeah. like the spanish people like see jlo she's still thick she's still she, yeah, do you understand curvy, like yeah. all these people so like they should cater to people in i think they do honestly for the, for the purpose of the runway they might put them on you know, slim model yeah. type ladies, but like I said, they in would. reality, they would cater to okay, you. Okay, so what do you take into consideration before collaborating with a designer? A beautiful piece, full stop. But I think you, <laughs> I, I, I think you have a relationship with certain people. I do, I do. Um, yeah. I feel like a, a brand that is, a brand that produces pieces that are my style, I'd definitely be attracted to, you know. So I like, I have, I have a certain style. I like clean lines. I like. I'm not. I'm not very. <laughs> People in fashion are talking. It's always very different. I like clean lines. To me, I'll usually be like, that just let it be tight or Please. let it show my shape or Please. something. Okay, what's your style? Continue. Um. So yeah. So like I said, I like clean lines. I like. I'm. I'm quite simple. Okay. You know. I'm not. I. I don't do too much at the same time. Most of the time. You know, so I'd, I'd wear like a really simple piece and make one statement. Right. So maybe I'd make a statement with my earrings or maybe there'd be an add-on that'd be a, the statement, you know. That's, that's generally my style. I'm actually, I like plain colors, but now I'm, I'm loving prints more and more, you right. know. And I like fabrics that look rich, you know, the texture of the fabric. <laughs> like I want you to look at the fabric and it just looks rich, such that I could use a fabric and just make the plainest top or the plainest dress but it still looks amazing because of the fabric Gosh, so i no, i find that no, <laughs> your excitement is rubbing up on me i'm getting excited thinking about fabric. So, yeah i find myself gravitating towards those brands right but how, how important is it for an individual to have a sense of style i think it's the normal the regular your regular folk mm. how important is it to be to have a sense of style a sense of fashion i think it's a sense, sense of style is important okay. you know you don't need to know a lot about fashion, fashion honestly you don't need to jump on all the trends but if you have a sense of style it would it would show i mean like i said for me my style affects my confidence how i look affects my confidence and i think it's the same for everybody imagine if you go to an event and you need to do some power networking and you're not looking as good Will you stand up and walk around as much as you're supposed to? I will to? stand up. <laughs> I will st <laughs> but chances are, chances are, if there's that one person that you really, really need to talk to and make an impression. If you're looking good, you be, you get up and do it. That's Misha. Like, if I'm looking good, chances are I will get up. My style gives me confidence I don't have. Let me just put it that way. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay, guys. We'll be back soon, and then she'll be answering the almighty question. Hi. Who fashion it? <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on Astoria Seas. Fashion can actually become one of Nigeria's major exports. Like I said, with our textiles, we, we naturally have a flair for color. Take a break and we'll be right back. to Astoria Seas and I'm still here with Mimi Onolaja. So Mimi, you have to answer this question. Who fashion M? Who fashion M? <laughs> e <What>? Everybody. <laughs> what is fashion's contribution to the society? Astoria Seas, fashion's contribution to the society is humongous. It is huge. Let me throw some numbers at you. No. <laughs> So the I had to research this, by the way. Right. Okay. <laughs> so the global fashion industry is worth what over three trillion dollars. Okay. The African fashion industry, which is still largely emerging, is worth thirty-one billion dollars. Nigeria's fashion industry is worth over ten billion dollars. Need I say more? What? 
how is that trickling? How is that trickling down to me? How is it trickling down <laughs> to the woman selling bread? So here's apart the thing. from Olajumoke. <laughs> I, I feel that because fashion is it's it's large. There's many there's many facets to it. So there's text there's the um, textiles industry. You know, people need to produce the fabric. People need to then make this fabric. There's production. There's there's PR. You know, there's retailing. There's so much to fashion, and because there's so many different aspects, there's a huge opportunity for employment. It's I mean, it's like I said, if, a, if an industry is worth $10 billion and it's still emerging, and you know the way we are in Nigeria, we like to look good, we like our fashion, we know our style. So you can only imagine the future of this industry. What we're complaining about unemployment, we're complaining about uh, the state of the nation. Yeah. Meanwhile, we have an industry that is worth potentially worth so much. Right. So I, I think it's very simple, honestly. There's so many people out there that don't have jobs today that can be trained and become tailors. Mm. There's so many people that can be Even trained to become hadire makers. Hadire makers, thank you. There's so key. much. There's so much. We have a textile industry that is not really doing too well right now, but it was once blooming, and it can bloom once again. And that would be a huge, huge employment of labor. Hmm. Which will result in revenue. Me, me, or no larger. <laughs> Which will make us all happy. <laughs> so fashion at the end makes us happy. Right. Um, if you could talk to somebody in government who had the power to create a policy, mm. what would you advise that person to do to help the industry? Hmm. I think, because um, I know, okay, this is why I'm not too knowledgeable, you know, but I, 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 I see the way it works in other industries and I see how sometimes the government would inject a certain amount of money right. into an industry that has potential to grow. So I, I would say, please throw some of that money fashion's way. There's a lot that can be done with it. And I guarantee, I, I can almost guarantee, <laughs> <laughs> before I'm quoted, I can almost guarantee that this money will be turned around, profit will be made, revenue will be generated. And fashion can actually become one of Nigeria's major exports. Like I said, with our textiles, we, we naturally have a flair for color. We like the bright stuff, you know. And I feel like there's, before I continue, even in fashion internationally, you see a lot of African influence yes. sometimes in the collections that these international designers. We've seen Beyonce in, in Ankara. Exactly, in, exactly. Yeah. Made by non-African designers. So imagine if it comes from us. Imagine if we put our natural flair for these colors and these prints and all of the vibrancy into these pieces. We have, we have the, the infrastructure to make sure that they are internationally acceptable in terms of standards, and we export them. Right. People like authenticity. Authentic authenticity. That word. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so actually something just crossed my mind and I thought to share with you guys. I saw a report somewhere that said Ankara is not really African. African. Ankara is actually Dutch. But they've kept quiet because they're making sweet money from mm. it. So if you want to, if you want to actually help um, what African fabrics think, Adire, think yeah. Asha OK, think Batik, I think those are like some of the, the fabrics you should consider purchasing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll be going on a short break now. When we get back, you'll get my final thoughts. Stay tuned. Take a break and we'll be right back. Welcome back to Astoyo Seas. And like I say, it will not be Astoyo Seas if you don't know what Toyo is seeing. So, what am I seeing? <laughs> I'm seeing that the African fashion industry actually has a lot of potential. And like Mimi has said, the government needs to do a bit more. Maybe infuse or inject some money into that sector. Because I've seen what the government has done for the arts and culture sector. They can do the same thing for the fashion industry and help the, the woman who is making Adire, the guy who is making Asha OK. Let's build the industry. And um, I feel like the fashion like designers they already have a lot of attention from the people so they should use their platform for something positive even the influencers and what influencers <laughs> were, they should use their platforms for something more powerful um, than just fashion like use it as a propeller or as a platform for something you really believe in and cause change in your own way yeah that's what Toyo is saying. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for being on the show thank you Mimi. for having me thank uh, you don't be a stranger okay 
I'm never a stranger. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you guys for watching. You can stay engaged with the show by following us on social media at Astoyosis on Twitter and Instagram. Make someone's life better today. See you next time. Bye. This is Astoyosis and my name is Astoyosis Philip. Thank you for watching.